Hello everyone and welcome to the installation video for the GP Star Kit. This video is actually updated from our original installation video because we have since made changes to our audio board, amplifier, and Nutrit connector, and a few other small details. So in this video, it's going to be jumping back between 90% of the original video and 10% of some new footage. So do not be alarmed if something looks off because my pack has gone through a lot of changes since we made our first installation video. In this video, we are only going to cover what we consider to be the main guts of the GP Star Kit, which includes the essential kit, the speaker support kit, and the inner cyclotron LED kit. Everything else is considered an add-on, and you can find the installation of those in their respective separate videos. Now, I will be jumping back and forth between these three kits. So if you come across something that doesn't apply to you because you didn't purchase a certain kit, uh, you can just go ahead and skip that step. And finally, word of warning, this kit does require some irreversible modifications to your pack and wand, so please proceed at your own risk. There are some required components that you will need to purchase yourself that are essential to the operation of the kit. This includes two SD cards. Please get some name brand high quality ones. If you're not sure which one to get, just look at our website and buy the ones that we recommend. If you get low quality, no name brand ones, you probably will run into some issues. Two 3.5 inch speakers. Our speaker support kit was built around these specific speakers here. So we do recommend you get these exact ones or ones alike. Again, please check the link on our website. And finally, a talent cell battery. Our kit is based around a 6,000 milliamp version. So that is the one we recommend. For the tools, here is a quick overview of what we use. Some tweezers, a Phillip head screwdriver, a flat head, small flat head screwdriver, pliers, cutters, wire stripper, Allen wrench, self-tapping screw, electrical tape, a drill, and a soldering iron that is optional. And we'll get more to that later on when we install the wand board. The first step we need to do is prepare a few things. And we're going to start off with the micro SD cards. Um, by sticking it into your computer and loading some files. You might need to use a micro SD card adapter if your computer doesn't take a micro SD card. So we're just gonna go ahead and put that in. Then on your computer, you wanna right click on the SD card and click format and make sure that the file system is set under fat and is set to 32 kilobits. Uh, formatting could be quick or full, doesn't really matter. It should, both should work. If you have a SD card that is greater than 32 gigabytes, you're going to want to go into our GitHub and click on circuits and download a program called GUI format. Click download on the right and you don't need to install it. All you need to do is just open it up, click yes. And there you go. You can format it this way. If your SD card is bigger than 32 gigabytes. Next, you're going to want to click on the link to our sound effects in the description and then click download, download, download anyway. And once that's done, you're going to unzip the file, copy everything in the folder and drag it over to your SD card. And once that's done, plug in the other one and do the same thing. And once that's done, take your two SD cards and plug them into the audio boards. Next, we're going to add some Velcro to the back of a few of the components here. You have a 2 inch one, a 2.5 inch, and two 3.5 inches. Take the 2 inch one and you're going to stick it on the back of the audio trigger. board. You're going to see that there's two here. So you're just going to have to rip off the back of one and stick it in the middle of the audio trigger. board. Next, the amp, same thing. And for the battery, you're going to want to take a look to make sure that the both sides are the same. So this side looks like the soft side. And this one here, yep, the bottom side is a soft side as well. So you're going to want to make sure that they're oriented the same way. And we're going to put it on the sides of the battery. Okay, so now moving on to the installation of the kit. Um, the first thing we're going to do is, of course, we're going to have to open up the pack. And you're going to do that first by removing the cyclotron lid and unscrewing the cyclotron cake. Next, you're going to want to flip your proton pack over and expose the motherboard. 
Here, there are gonna be 17 screws you're gonna to need to remove, 15 long ones and two short ones here and here. And then you're gonna to want to remove the motherboard. And you'll see that there are some wires connecting to the board. Moving in closer, you're gonna see that those wires that come from the motherboard are connected to this yellow housing here. So we're gonna to need to remove that. Um, before I do, I just give you a, a, an important tip. Um, this could be a series of tips in this video that I like to call important sa safety tip, thanks Egon. So important safety tip, thanks Egon number one is do not remove these, these connectors via the wires. Make sure you pull on, pull on the housing because otherwise this will happen. And whoops, okay, that's gone. So let me show you the orange one. Yeah, I mean the purple one. I did the same thing. Use your fingers, but make sure you pull on housing or if you want, use pliers. Pliers helps in a lot of situations, especially you'll find with the wand. But um, I'm just go ahead and do that with my fingers. Okay, that one's a little tough. Let me use the pliers. Yeah, there. So once you move that, you can put the motherboard aside for now. And then while we're here, you might as well just go ahead and remove the rest. Continue on, we're gonna need to remove the stock equipment that's in the side of the pack here, the, the main board, the speaker, and the rotor encoder. And with that, you're gonna to wanna to take your Phillips head screwdriver and you're gonna go at the two screws here and here for the main board. And it helps to have a little tray or something like that to put the screws in so you don't lose them. It's probably best to have three different trays, one for the, the motherboard, two for all the internal stuff in the pack and another one for the wand. So, and also I have to mention that keep these screws cause we're gonna reuse them for the our replacement board. And now for the speaker, like this one doesn't fit. You might need, if you have a Phillips head screwdriver that's similar size, you might need to find a smaller one like I am. And we'll just go ahead and remove that. There are two, one there and another one here. And then the speaker, you can just kind of gently put aside. Or let it fall, whatever. And then there's two here for the rotor encoder that you need to remove. And then that's it. That's an entire thing. You can just put that aside. And then finally, we're going to take off the mount here. Two screws, one there and one there. Next, moving on, we're gonna go over here to the power cell panel. So we're gonna need to remove this board here. And as you can see, there are two screws, one there and one there that you're gonna need to remove. So go ahead. And once that's done, you just, just slides right out. Moving on to the bottom of the pack, you're gonna wanna take your Allen wrench and we're gonna have to remove this. Okay, then take this out. And we no longer need this, you can put this aside. And then the final set of screws that you need to remove is the inside of the motherboard. You got the two strap covers, we're gonna have to remove the right one. Make sure you save all those screws. Um, there are some short and some long. We will be reusing these later on. And that is it for the preparation part portion of this installation video. Now we can finally move on to the actual installation of the kit. Take your GP Star Pack main board and that was just slotting exactly where the old one used to be. Take the two short screws and we're gonna screw in in the same spots. Next, take the rotary encoder and slot it in in the same spot. You're going to want to orient it this way so that the connector is facing downwards. 
and you're gonna need to take two long screws and we're gonna screw it in where the old one used to be. From package A, you're gonna wanna take this three pin connector, double end connector, blue, yellow, and black. And we're gonna connect that from the board to the rotary encoder. And this end goes into here, the purple three pin connector that says volume. Take the bottom speaker mount and that goes in right here. Line up the round part with the peg. Then take the top speaker mount, put in there. Next, take the top speaker bracket and you just wanna take two long screws and pair them in there by screwing them in just a little bit. Then you go ahead and place that right there, lining up the holes and screwing it in. Then take a speaker and with the terminal plugs pointed to the left, you're gonna slot it in there, making sure that this hole lines up with the hole in the top middle part of this bracket. Then take one long screw and secure it. Take your other speaker and the bottom speaker mount and you're just gonna line it up. Looking at it from top, you're gonna wanna make sure that the terminal blocks are also pointed out to the left. So, and you're gonna line up the, the holes. I'm gonna flip it over and show you that you wanna line up the adjacent holes. So this one here and this one down here. Or you can do this one here and this one there, doesn't matter. Make sure you take two short screws and put it in those two adjacent holes and secure it. And when you're done, this actually fits in right here. But for now, we're just gonna put it aside. Now we're gonna make the first irreversible modification to our pack here. Ooh, scary. So this here, this needs to go. So we're gonna take some pliers and we're gonna rock back and forth on this until it snaps off. There you go. And also you're gonna see there's like four little nubs here. One of them already broke off of mine. You're gonna need to snap those off as well. There, all done. Then take your talent cell battery and remove the back of the tapes. And push the power cell wires aside and we're gonna drop in like this. Just make sure you line up first before you drop it straight down. And then you wanna push a bit. Lift it up just to test it out. And yep, yeah, that looks pretty good. Then from package A, you wanna take these two toggle switches and we're just gonna remove the nuts off them for now. Take your 3D print tape replacement panel and where you see these two holes, we're gonna screw in these toggle switches. Make sure that they are lined up vertically. Then take the two nuts and apply it to the front. While holding on to the back, keeping it straight, you want to take some pliers and tighten the nuts. Then do a little test to make sure that they switch up and down. Then use one long screw and you just want to prepare it by putting into the panel slot here. And then take your panel and go ahead and install that. Then 
I'll we'll make sure that the, these little wires go in or behind here. And secure it. Next, take your pack version of the GP Star audio board. Make sure that the switch is set to boot, so it should be pointed down towards this end. And I've already done it here, but you're gonna to wanna to take off the Velcro piece at the back and just stick it on this side here. Next, we can start connecting some of the connections back to the board, starting with the iron arm that goes right here on this white housing. Take your power cell and that goes into this four pin white one. The two toggle switches, it's up to you which one you want to use. One of them will be for the cyclotron direction and one will toggle on and off the end filter smoke. So for the cyclotron direction, that is the blue one up here. And the end filter smoke toggle will be right here, this little purple one. The two pin red one is the alarm switch that will go right here. And the blue one for the inner cyclotron panel switches that will go right next to it on the blue one here. And this is the, the green one is for the vibration. If yours isn't broken like mine, let's pretend that this one isn't broken. That would go right over here. So just use your imagination and pretend that I didn't make a boo-boo. And then for these wires, you're gonna kinda wanna just have it situated there. And I'll show you why in a bit. But for the red cyclotron lid, um, that one is gonna go right behind the white one here. Do not mix it up with this red one down here. And this, for this wire here, you're gonna just wanna set it aside like somewhere down there for now. Turning our attention to the side of the pack, you're gonna wanna from package A, take the USB to JST connector, and we're gonna drop it in through the middle hole. and then plug the other end into the battery. And while we're at it from your speaker support kit, you're gonna wanna take this DC barrel jack and drop that through the, holes, the first hole. And plug that in. Now take the two pin JST connector that came from the battery and you're gonna wanna plug that in right here in this two pin yellow one in the middle. And just to double check, make sure it says battery and that should be the right one. From package A, you're gonna take this four wire, but double and a six pin housing. And you're gonna take the bigger one and plug into the audio trigger. board. Take the other end and that will go into this gray one right here where it says audio trigger. board. Next, take your GP Star amp board. And first we're gonna connect the power. And as you see, um, this one here, this is the power cable you want. Now, if you have a short one like this, you're gonna wanna route it down here and out through here. Cause we're gonna be installing the amp board right here. Um, I have it installed up here because I have the old amp board. If you have one of the long cables, you can route it up along here instead, it's up to you. And that will connect to here. So the red will be positive on the left and the negative on the right. And then screw them on. Next, focusing on the top speakers, um, I already plug these in. The little one goes in there, that is the negative. And then the big one on here is the positive. So we're gonna start the negative here and just pick one of these, doesn't matter which one. Look for the negative that's labeled on the board. Let's stick that in. Take the positive, do the same on the other side. And then screw them tight. And finally for the bottom speaker, 
I'll go ahead and put these on first. And these will sit in here like that. You can go ahead and put the wire along there. It goes up top and below. Just put it in there. And then the same thing. So we got the negative goes into right neg R negative. Positive goes into right positive. Screw them tight. Now you can take your auxiliary cable and I've already ran it through, but to take this one and that goes into your audio board here. And that will run along above this top bottom speaker here through the along here into this little no notch here and then it will plug into the auxiliary port right there now just in, indulge me for a second and just pretend i have the power wires coming out here connected to the battery um you're also you're going to want to take a velcro and stick it on the back here and this should be able to fit in right here Try to get it as deep as you can, and that should stick right to the back there. Now, this may or may not be concerned, but if you're still using the stock uh, Hasbro motherboard, be careful um, with these two posts here. They may or may not bump into the caps that are on this amp board here. Fortunately, these two posts are completely useless. If you want, you can snap these off or shave them down if you want to be safe. Now from package B, you're going to want to take the Klinko socket end connector. And what we're going to do is run the wires in through the hole there. Um, before you do that, you're going to see this rubber piece is, is optional. You can take this off if you like, but just to let you know if you do, because this round part is bigger than the hole in the pack, this won't actually sit flush against here it will actually be raised slightly. So if you don't mind that, and I know I don't mind it, it's not too big a deal, you can just go ahead and just leave it as is. Another option is if you leave the rubber piece on, uh, the thickness of the rubber piece will actually fill that gap. So what you can do, you can just snip this cover piece off and just use the rubber end and that should sit flush. So go ahead and run the cables through the hole. You're run it behind this little thing here. And here you're gonna see where it says wand. You're gonna see the plus and minus yellow connector on the left and the purple one on the right. You're gonna wanna take the black and red one and plug it into the yellow connector. This is to distribute power to the wand board. And the yellow and blue is to, dis is to transfer data. And that goes into the purple one right next to it. Make sure you don't get these two mixed around. And then back on the hose end, um, you can decide which orientation you want this to be in. You can take the other connector and line it up like this. And you can decide which way you want that to be pointing. So I think I'm okay with doing this way. So I'm just gonna point it like that. Now, when you line up, the connector to the pack you're going to notice that the holes do not line up at all they're totally it looks like it's totally too small for it um but do not worry it does fit even though it doesn't look like it first you're going to want to take the uh, stock haslap screws and just prepare them and first shout outs to our squad 911 for this technique uh he explained it very well on his youtube channel and that's where i kind of got the idea from what you want to do is you're going to want to screw these in at an angle and you just want to go in a few threads at a time and you just have to be very patient with this it does take a bit of time and finesse so i screw that one in a little bit and i go in with the other As you can see, the screws are not straight. They're coming in at an angle. So I've already done it. So this is pretty, this is going in a lot easier for me. 
but the first time I did it, it does take a bit of finesse. You might have to back them up a little bit, shift a few things around and then screw it in again. Just take your time with it and eventually it works. It, it's, it's like magic. And that's all done, look at that. You can barely tell that the screws are come to the angle. It looks like it just fits perfectly. And here's looking at it from the side with the rubber piece. Uh, it does sit a little bit more flush. Now, turning our attention back to the motherboard, there are going to be two tabs sticking out here that look something like this and like that. And you're going to take your pliers like I did, and you're going to need to snap those off. Those are just going to get in the way now. Okay, now that everything is wired up, um, we do have time for a bench test. But before you do that, you're going to have to double check your connections. Double check all the connections on the board. Go back in the video if you need to, look at some diagrams in our written manual and make sure that they're all plugged in correctly. The speaker terminal wires, are they plugged into the right terminal blocks on the amp? Is a DC power cable connected to the right one? Are the polarities flipped around? So double check that. And once you're done double checking, triple check it. Do it again, because <laughs> you, you don't want to mess this up. Then once you're done that, take your motherboard and we're just gonna put it back on. Don't put on any, any screws yet. We just need it to hold the speaker down and keep everything in place for now. Flip it over. Put your cyclotron lid back on. Open the panel here and flip the battery on. Say a prayer and then switch it on. <coughs> It works. I'm going to turn down a bit. So go ahead and test her out. Um, test the volume knob. Flip the switches. Change the modes. Um, just run all your tests and make sure everything's working fine. Have fun with it. And yeah, good job. Take a break for now and we're going to move on to the wand. Alright guys, now it's time for the dreaded wand. If you haven't already, you can remove this and take the battery tray out. We will never be using this again or this. Next, we're going to have to do some irreversible modifications to this wand here. Um, if you look closely, you can see that there are four pegs here that are flush against the gun rail. There are several ways to remove this. Um, just use whatever tools you have. I just have a pair of scissors. Just make a little bit of a hole in there and then I take my self-tapping screw okay so I have to use some pliers to pull this one out um, I think some of these are glued in a little bit tougher than I thought. My last one was a lot simpler, but there you go. Use whatever tools you have. You can drill it and yeah, just have to yank that out. So let me try the other one again and I'll do an uncut version here. So I already made a hole here with the pointy end of my scissors. If you have a drill with a small bit, you can do that as well. Oh, okay. I don't know. That one came out easy. So there you go. It, it seems to vary the strength of the glue that is on these things. All right, let's try this one out. See how stuck this one is. Oh, this one's stuck a little bit more. There we go. Um, I know Michael personally uses a reamer on the end of a Swiss Army knife. That seems to work well for him. I have removed it with just these scissors. I just dug in and just pried it off. 
So it's really up to you, whatever works. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna be honest, this part of the installation did not go as smoothly as I planned. I thought this, this would pop a lot easier with just a self-tapping screw. But you get the idea. Use what you got, as long as you get these out. That's all that matters. Next, take a screwdriver and remove the four screws that are underneath it. Just like that. There might be some debris that's kind of stuck at the edge there still blocking the screw. So you might, you can try to break that off. Or like me, I just unscrewed it and yeah, the whole thing came off anyways. Okay, and now we have another four sets of screws to remove here, 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 and an extra long one right there. So make note that this one is extra long. Next, we can open this up. Be mindful of this heat sink here, however. This is where the speaker is behind here. Um, let's just hold it down for now and pry it out open. And the reason why I tell you to be careful about the speaker is that this thing does come off. And right now, the wires are pretty tight, but you see those two yellow wires connected to the speaker? They are very delicate. Be careful. You do not want to have this thing hang upside down, hang having the speaker hanging by the wires because they eventually will break off. So be careful of that. Just in case, put a piece of tape on it to secure it and make sure that's not going anywhere. Now, while we're at it, you want to take a Sharpie and make note that when looking at the wand this way, the left side is negative and the right side is positive. Next, remove this tape here break off this glue that's holding these wires together. Just go slowly, be mindful of the wires, be careful not to break them. This is taking a lot longer than I thought. It seems that there are different versions of this wand where the insides are a little bit different because my last wand was not this difficult. It did not have nearly as much glue. Oh, okay, that took forever. Now take your Phillips head screwdriver and we're gonna unscrew the board. There are four screws here. Okay, uh, there's one more piece of tape I forgot to, to remove here. So now I'm just gonna flip this over. It's easier to work on this from this side. For these connectors, they're a lot trickier to remove. Uh, I've been trying with pliers off screen and it's still tricky. The problem is these two tabs here on these connectors are really tight. Um, so I'm using some tweezers some thin tweezers. I'm just gonna lift it up a little bit to make some room. And then I gently pull it. Well, that wasn't that gentle, but I'm just gonna stick this in between these two tabs here. I'm just gonna bend this housing a little bit, give it a little bit more room. Let's see if that comes off easier. There we go. Yeah, it comes off much easier if you just kind of bend the housing like this so the low two the tabs that are coming up don't have hit it as much. Okay, and then there's a third one right here. Okay, so now we have the three connectors of the way. We're gonna work on removing these wires here. So there's two options to do this. You can either snip this, snip these off, strip the wires and then twist it, or you can desolder the back here. So let me show you method number one first. 
All right, I'm gonna do it with this one right here to demonstrate. So you wanna try to get as close to the end as possible. And the safest way here to strip the wire is just get wire cutters. So these are 26 gauge stranded wires. So on mine, you see it says stranded on this side and 26, so it would be that hole right there. And just strip off the ends, as you can see, and just twist it to make sure it's tight. No stranded wires being loose. So that's method number one. Now method number two, this is the method I prefer and I would suggest for any of you, whether you solder or you don't. I'm, I'm gonna show you why. The only tool you need is a soldering iron. You don't need any other soldering um, related items. You don't need a solder wick. You don't need helping hands. You don't need none of that. You just need any soldering iron that will work. You can get a cheap one somewhere. You can borrow from a friend because all we're doing is desoldering the, on the back here. And I'm gonna show you just how easy that is. So working with the second wire right here, that is this right here. Now all I'm gonna do is hold on to the wire. I'm just gently kind of pulling against and pushing against the board very gently. You wanna heat up your soldering iron first. Um, most of them take a few minutes before they heat up. And once it's fully heated up, all we're doing is a touching the back here until it turns liquid metal. And look at that, it just slipped right off, nice and easy. Now the benefit of this is we didn't have to cut the wire to make it even shorter. It's or the, some of the solder is stuck to the, the wire so it's nice and tinned, so no stranded wires would come loose. And as opposed to the other method, if you make any mistakes, um, you're gonna have to keep cutting it shorter and shorter and shorter. And you know, you don't want to do that, obviously. Because if you don't have one of these, you can just use some scissors and gently go around and apply some pressure and then just pull it up but of course like i said if you make a mistake and you cut it then you're gonna have to keep going down 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 and with this method look at that it's just nice and easy it, cut, it just pops right off and no mistake so watch i'm gonna do it again with the rest so you just touch the back until it turns to liquid and it comes right off and watch it turn to t1000 and then pull now I'm going to montage this. The last two, I'm having trouble with the last two. Uh, I'm just going to pull up on the board and do them both simultaneously and try to get them off that way. There we go. That one's easier. <laughs> So all done, like I said, highly recommend you guys trying the solder method, method first, okay? Um, just be careful. Um, we are dealing with high temperatures. You know, the board does get warm around it. The wires, you know, you make sure you're not touching the wires. Hold, hold on to the rubber ends. And yeah, just a few safety precautions and that's all. Okay, next we're gonna do some drilling. So what we need to do is we're gonna drill a hole if you look into this little space here, that little black piece, that is actually the underside of the, the wand handle. So we're gonna need to drill a hole right here. Um, but first we're gonna move this cable off the way because I don't want you to drill and accidentally nick the ends here and damage those cables. <coughs> I totally didn't do that myself. Also, we do need this wire to be longer to connect it to the new board. And unfortunately, the only way to move this out of the way is through this little gap in between here, right in there. So the easiest way is to unscrew this here. And then lift the spring up and then remove this one down here on the bottom. Okay, and so we can just Lift that aside out of the way for now. So what you need to do is, okay, you give it some slack. So you're gonna put it down and we're gonna bend it, put it against the wall, starting the red wire. 
and we're just gonna maybe using your tweezers try to pry open as much space as you can and we're just gonna have to shimmy it through that using the tweezers holding down here to keep it towards the base as much as possible so that we can go as flat as possible okay almost there making it more flat go slowly take your time i'm pushing in on the other end with the tweezers and pulling a few moments later there we go all right, not the most graceful, not the most graceful. I only sustained a bit of surface scratches on the top, but no, nothing major damage at all. So we're good here. So like I said, we want to drill right into this wand handle here. And if I flip it over, it basically comes up like a little right here on this side inside the body up into this part of the handle here and what we also need to do when drilling is try to get it as close to the right side as possible so we can get as much center and another thing is you have to go in at an angle do not drill straight down it has to be in an angle if you drill straight down there is another wall there and the wires will not feed through the handle. So you have to come in this way. I'm gonna show you my other one, the first one I did. If you look down the hole there, yeah, you see a big hole right there? That first, I drilled mine straight down and it didn't, uh, the wires did not fit feed through. And then I had to go in it again at an angle. So you see the second hole up there and that one uh, worked. That one went in an angle and it went right through to the handle. So ignore the one on the right. You want to do what's like the one on the left. So first take your drill and you want to use a small bit. We're going to drill what's called a pilot hole, a very small hole. So that later on when we move up to bigger sizes, um, you'll get more traction and it won't go around everywhere. We have a center point that can drill in a lot more precisely. So here we go. So I'm going to try to do this right about there and I am at a 45 degree angle. Just go slowly. Okay, don't make sure you don't push all the way through and break the other side. Okay. Clear the dust. Okay, moving up to the next size. And then the next size. Take the dust. That should, looks like it should be big enough to feed four wires through. Now do a test. If you think it's big enough, do a test and make sure it feeds through. So from package C, you want to take these two wires and we're going to try to see if these wires feed through. 
So I'm just gonna test one out. Push it through. So far so good, I can feel it. And yes, success. To be honest, I'm so <laughs> relieved this worked on my first try. Uh, I guess the key is make sure you cut in at an angle, like I said. And since we're here, we might as well feed all the wires through. It might be easier to just apply a bit of tape. I'm just gonna do one cable at a time. Feeding the second set of cables will be a little bit trickier. Uh, I'm using tweezers as you see, this, this seems to help a lot. Okay, there we have it. Now we can go ahead and put this back together. Now that everything's prepared, we can move on to the installation of the GP Star 1 board. But first, important safety tip, thanks to Egon number 4, I believe. These terminal blocks, I, they might you, when you receive them, they might come all closed already. And the first time using these, you might not notice them if they're, whether they're open or not, closed or not. So if you look at number 1, that's closed. So we're going to unscrew it to the left. And you see the little elevator door, as I like to call it, will lower. So you're going to want to go all across these and make and turn them all to the left to make sure that they're open. Next, we're going to first start off with the installation of all the terminal wires, which is this jumbo mess here. Um, I like to have this wand oriented this way so that the wand handle is pointing to the right. So if you look closely, you'll see the labels for each terminal block. We're gonna start with the blocks on the left. So for your benefit, I have included two diagrams in different orientations. The top one is facing up and the bottom one is facing down. So whichever one is most helpful for you, you can go follow that. So first off, we're gonna take these two orange wires here and that will go into A7 and ground. The, the order does not matter for this one. So you can put whatever one you want. So you go ahead and put that in and turn. Give it a bit of a tug to make sure it's secure. Make sure you're clamping down on the actual wire and not the plastic covering. So this one, the second one goes into ground. Now for the next one, we're gonna need to take the slow bowl light that is right here. And those are a red and black wire. You're going to notice that, let me put this aside, there are three sets of black and red wires. Two here that are separated, a pair here that's joined together, and another shorter one right here. So we're going to want to make sure we're taking the one that is connected to slow blow light. So you can just give this one a tug to see if that wire down here is moving. Looks like it is, so that is the one we want. This one is connected to the old stock uh, HasLab battery tray. We don't need this anymore at all. So if you want, you can just you can just cut this off or tape up the ends, making sure that they're not touching each other, and just tuck this away down below, never to be, to be used again. So back to the board, taking the slow blow connections we're going to connect the red wire to the next to the third pin D8. So the red wire wasn't able to connect and I'm going to use this awesome opportunity to demonstrate important safety tip thanks Egon tip number 5. So what happened was as you can see here for terminal number 3 no matter how many times I turn the door will not close. It's no longer um, attached to the screw. So what you want to do is take some tweezers and you're going to try to grab the bottom part of the door 
and push into it and up. So up towards the screw. At the same time, you're gonna need to screw it to the right. So I'm gonna take my tweezers, I'm pushing in against the bottom of the elevator door, whatever part you can grab onto that's slightly exposed, and I'm pushing up towards the screw while I'm turning to the right. And there we go. Now the door is lifting back up and we're able to close it. So that was D8, the red wire from the slow blow. And then you take the black one to the fourth pin, which is ground. Next, take the two brown wires. This is the lower toggle. And that will be going into D4 and ground. The order doesn't matter for this one either. Next, we're gonna take the two red wires that are connected to each other like this. This is the upper toggle switch. And this will go into A0 and ground. Order does not matter. Sometimes it might be easier to just put them both in and then secure it. Next, we're gonna take the red and yellow wire that comes from that spot right there. This is the clippered LED. And the red wire goes into D9 and the yellow wire goes into ground. Red wire that are joined together and this will be for the rumble motor. So the red will go into R positive and the black will go into R negative. Do not get, do not get these flipped around. And then moving on to the next set of terminal blocks, um, we're gonna start with this six wire ribbon cable. We're gonna start with the blue one all the way on the end here. And that goes into the first terminal block, which is labeled VCC. So blue to VCC, then the green to A5. Yellow to A4. Orange to A3. Red to A2. and brown to A1. Okay, that's done. So this ribbon cable is for the stock five LED bar graph. Okay, for the next one, we're gonna take this red, white, and black one. These will unfortunately have to cross over. So the white one's in the middle, but that one's gonna go first into D, was it D12? And before I do that, important safety tip, thanks to Egon number five, six, do not cross up D12 and D13. If you do, that might pop one of your LEDs because um, they do. they are on different resistors. So white to D12 and black to D13. Very important not to mix those up. And finally, take the red one and that will go into VL plus. And last but not least is the rotary encoder. And they will go in the proper order, orange, red, and brown. So the orange will go into D7. The red into D6. and the brown goes into ROT negative. And that's it. Just pull on some of the wires, make sure they're all nice and secure. Okay, next, I'm just gonna flip this around. Um, one thing I forgot to do earlier is we gotta figure out 
the, the speaker wire, which one is positive or negative. So we're gonna have to remove the tape here. And you're gonna have to gently uh, take this off. So you try to push in the wire, to give it some slack as you lift this up. You don't wanna pull on the wire too much. Yeah. And again, be careful when you're handling this, don't let it dangle from the wire because these things can break. And so, and so looking at it, I already marked it. This side is positive, that's negative. So looking at the wire, this side here is positive. And I'm just gonna mark it with a piece of tape. And then this can go back under. Next, we're gonna install the wand cage. And take the speaker wires first. And we're just gonna need it to be on the inside and it'll be right in the middle there. And take your wand cage and that goes from underneath, goes into it and on that little ledge here, on this side, that's where the back sits on, oops. So it's kind of tricky to do with the speaker wire, but we're gonna need that in there. So it just goes like that. Make sure the speaker wire clears. Yep, it's okay, there we go. There we go. And then just push up on this side, and then we're gonna seat it right there like that. Making sure there's no wire in the way. Okay, and while we're here, you're gonna have to stuff all these wires in to the little hole. Next, we're gonna reconnect these connectors here, starting with this three pin one. Um, this is connected to the barrel LED. Um, I actually made a mistake, it's probably, you can connect it this way, but it's probably ideal to pull it out and connect it over top instead. And this goes right here. Uh, reason being is, so there's more slack for the barrel to go back and forth with. Then take the white two pin one. This is for the hat light button at the barrel tip. And this one goes all the way to the back corner right here. Take the four pin one that's come from this side, that goes right next to it, right there. From the wand handle, we're gonna take the black and red one. This is for, to supply battery to the wand, and that goes right here. And then the blue and yellow one for the data, that goes over here where it says TX1 and RX1. Once that's done, just kind of do a bit of cable management, make sure this is clear. This goes over top, these can go right behind this little thing, that's all right. Don't, don't worry about that, it won't pinch the wires until it won't break. Next, take your wand audio board. Your, yours is gonna have a green terminal here facing in. I'm, I'm sorry, that, but the one I have here, um, I, I kind of replaced it with a JST connector instead. And then so, Pretending there are green screw terminals here. So you're gonna be screwing in like this. And then so the positive will be on this side, the left side, the outside. So my blue wire is positive. It was screwing over there. And then the negative will be on the right side here. So again, pretend I did that already with my speaker. I'm just connected like this. Then take this wire here, plug that in, make sure that the this little switch here is pointed down to boot. And then this just goes into the gray connector there. Next, you're gonna to wanna to put this corner into the little groove peg here. And then sit this end into that little square. And then stick that into that one over there. And that should be nice 
and flat. And now once everything's in there, you can tidy up a bit with the wires. Make sure everything's seated properly. Make sure there's no wires underneath the one cage here. Uh, no wires are blocking any of the posts. And then push, make sure the wires inside here are pushed in and it's clear so that this can move back and forth smoothly. Next, just close up the wand for now. See if, if it has, see how it fits. It should still fit pretty nicely. If there's any snag or it's not, the edges are not sitting flush, you can open it up again and check to see if the wires are in the way of anything. Mine looks pretty good, which is surprising on the first try. And before we move on, you're gonna take your gun track and you're gonna to need to break off these little nubs here. Now I suggest you leave this open for now until you do a full test to make sure everything works. But if you're feeling confident or lazy, you can go ahead and close this up. And moving on, we're gonna do the hose connection. So for those who have the essential kit, you're gonna notice that you have a split loom hose here. Um, you should have about five feet. The one that you see here is my own personal one. This is only four feet. So yours could be a little bit longer. And it's up to you if you're happy with just using the split loom and nothing else, or if you plan to modify it into an afterlife hose, you're gonna to wanna to do all that before you start wiring the connections together from the pack to the wand. But for the sake of the video, I'm just gonna use the split loom hose. Turning our turn attention first to the wand end, you're gonna notice in your package that for some reason there are two of these connectors. The reason being is that the, in the Hasbro wand, as you can see, the threads that are in the wand here, there's two different versions of where it begins. So this one here, mine, begins somewhere near the bottom and others, I th believe, begin somewhere near the left. So we include two of them for both versions and you're gonna wanna use the one where once you thread it in, the bottom, the screw hole here should be facing the bottom. So just grab one of them and test it out and see where it goes. Okay, so I screwed that one in, as you see, this one points to the left. So this is the wrong one for my version of the wand. So screwing in the second one. There, as you see, this is the correct one, as the screw hole is at the bottom of my wand. So you can just get rid of this. Next, you'll also notice a little screw. You're, you should have a different version than this one. You're gonna get a cap screw instead of the socket one. Um, you're gonna just wanna prepare it. So we're just threading in part way. Next, take the female neutral connector and we're gonna start screwing in the wires. Turning it over, you'll see here that it says one negative, one positive, two negative, and two positive. So starting with the black wire, we're gonna to wanna to screw that into the one negative. But first important safety tip, thanks Egon number seven, make sure that it clamps down on the tinned end. Do not put the wire too far deep. Otherwise it'll clamp on the plastic housing here and the connection would not be established. So, so we're gonna stick that in there and then we're gonna turn over to the side and tighten it with the screw connector here. Give it a tug, that's good. Next, we're gonna to go to one positive. So red to one positive. Take the blue wire and that goes into two negative. And lastly, take the yellow wire and that goes into two positive. And then just leave this for now as it is and we're gonna come back to it. Then from package B, you're gonna take the other end of the Klinko connector and we're gonna run these wires through the hose. Now, depending on what your hose setup is, um, you might not you might want to take this cap off so it depends if you're using the afterlife hose and maybe putting a breather on maybe you like this thicker piece for something to grab onto but if you're using just the split loom you'll notice that it is a perfect fit for the hose so running through the wires would be easier if you tape up the ends, similar to what we did with the wand.
And then from package C, you're gonna to wanna to take out this neutral connector. There should be four pieces like this. And then you're gonna take your wires and starting with this piece, we're gonna thread them through. And take the white piece and do the same. And much like the other neutral connector, we're gonna connect, connect these to the back here. So if you look at the diagram over here on the right, um, that, that, that should help you out because these numbers here are, are quite small. You're gonna have to shine some light and look closely. Also for this neutral connector, you're gonna need to use a T7 screw, which is the ones that are shaped like a, a star. So starting with the red one, that's gonna go into one positive. Screw that on. Next, the black one will go into one negative. And then the blue one goes into two negative. Finally, the yellow one goes into two positive. One way to make sure that the connections are done properly, uh, we're gonna insert this end and lock it. And you just wanna trace the wires because when you're looking at it, they should line up. So you see here, yellow goes to yellow. The blue, yep, it goes to blue on top. Red is right there, and then it goes to red, and black goes to black. Once that's done, we're gonna go ahead and secure this. And how you do that is um, right below the silver piece, you can see a, a little hole here, and that's gonna line up the screw hole at the bottom of the connector here. Now back to the other neutral connector, it would be wise to go ahead and test this out before you close this up. Because once this fanned out white part goes inside, it's gonna be very hard to take this apart again. So I would recommend that you go ahead and just plug everything in, run your pack, run the wand, and make sure everything's okay before you close this up. And once you finish that test, or if you're feeling confident, then we can just go ahead and close this up. First thing you wanna do is take this little white tab, and line it up and you take this end and it also only goes in one way. There are two tabs here, one wider than the other and you just gotta line it up with that. And then this one goes in the back here and then you just screw it tight. Take your wand, it should go in this way. Pull the lever, twist and make sure it's locked. Once it's nice and tight, you're good to go. Lastly, and this applies to both ends, you're gonna to wanna to take some electric tape, actually lots of electrical tape, and you're just gonna wrap this around. And tape it. You'll notice that it helps with the bending if you tape up up along the holes up to around here. Then likewise with the other end, do the same thing. Just wrap a lot of tape. And finally, the moment of truth. If you're satisfied with all the testing you've done, well, too bad, go back and do it again. So let's go ahead and connect the hose. And before I turn the battery, keep an eye on the wand. When the battery turns on, if you see the vent light flash followed by the bar graph flashing, that's a good sign. That means that power is being routed to the wand correctly. Say a prayer and Test out all the connections. It works. So, I checked that uh, it seems like everything is working. Um, if you want to know how to operate it to full, do a full test, you know, how to change the settings, how to test out the different modes, um, you can check out a walkthrough video on Dustin Grau's YouTube channel or 
refer to the handbook or use our um, written instructions online on Michael's GitHub. So that's it. Good job. You've done it. You've installed the main kit. And now let's move on to the add-on kit, the inner cyclotron LEDs. Now with the inner cyclotron cake and, L and panels LED kit, we're going to start off with the cake itself. If you have a 3D printed custom one already, you can skip this step. For the rest of you, you can go ahead and take that off. From the package, you're going to want to grab the plastic guitar pick. I misplaced mine, so I'm just using this cardboard cutout as a stand-in. And basically what you want to do is you want to go up and into these edges here. And you're going to poke all the way up until you hear some pops or clicks or something. And then you don't, you don't want to do any lifting. You don't want to pry it open. You don't want to damage that. Okay, so this one is going to take some time. You're going to want to go up and in to hear click or pop. And you're just going to go all the way through, all the way around until it's completely done. I do believe that certain parts, like maybe the post here, I mean, it's harder to get into, but I think it might have even more glue. It does help to put a piece of tape on where you're starting. That way you don't uh, overlap and get lost. Once you've gone all the way through and you've broken the glue that's holding it, the, these two pieces together, you can pry it open and it'll look something like this. Next, you're gonna wanna take the LED ring and just drop it in, center as best you can. Maybe get a marker to mark where the ends are. And then we're just, we're gonna have to pry these off. So I guess if you're using weak ones like mine, you just got to do a lot of twisting as you're trying to cut through it and eventually that'll get right through it. Okay, one done. So as you see, you want to get all the way to the bottom so that the ring can sit nice and flush. Okay, now that that's all broken off, that actually wasn't too bad. Again, uh, to do a lot of twisting and then they come up a lot easier. So take your LED and do another test fit. Make sure that it drops in perfectly fine. Next, take some Velcro strips. I like to use the soft side on the back of the object, so make sure that back side yep the soft side on there and that goes there and then go ahead and attach it to both sides um if you want you can cut off the excess but it's up to you you know what i'm gonna go ahead and do that okay go ahead and peel off the back side and attach it to the cyclotron cake now we're gonna want to line this up so that this end here lines up with this end because we're gonna be drilling a hole through here. So that goes like this. Okay, yeah, take it off. Make sure it's all good. Put this aside for now. Take your drill and much like the wand, we're gonna start with a smaller one to drill a pile of hole through the middle. And then moving up. Test out to see if it fits through. Mm, doesn't quite fit through. So I'm gonna have to break off a little bit more inside there. I'm just taking some pliers and I'm just kind of grinding it out. If you have a Dremel, it'll be easier. I'm just trying to find ways that works for everyone. Almost there. Almost there. If you have file, you have a file. If you have a Dremel, this will be a lot easier. Okay, I grinded it down just enough 
that it barely fits through. So again, I, if you have a Dremel, you have other tools, use those instead. I do have a Dremel, I'm just trying to avoid it, just kind of show you guys um, some other alternative ways to do it. The drill bit I used was the biggest one I had, so that's why I couldn't go bigger. If you, had, if you can go bigger, that would have been a lot easier. You could drill the bigger hole. You can try to recenter it if it looks a little off center. I think that's good enough for me. And with the lid, you can just put some super glue back on the edges. Use hot glue, it's up to you. Use some tape, doesn't matter. And then you just close that back up. Now turning our attention back to the proton pack. We're gonna go back inside, remove the motherboard. And then lift it up. And carefully just move the pack aside. And we're gonna be working on this part here. So you can just turn around. You can just turn it around and drop the screws out. So save those four. Be sure to unplug the blue four pin connector from the main board. And take that out. Reason being is these connections here are quite delicate as well. So we don't want to have any pull on these wires. And next from the panel, we're gonna remove the two toggle switches. Um, they're just screwed in by nuts in the front. So you can go ahead and unscrew those. Next to take out the panel, we're gonna to need to take off this entire bottom part. So we have to remove the screw here, 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 and I think that's it. And then that just slides right out. Next from package L, you're gonna have your a um, bunch of wires connected to some LEDs, some clip lights, and then you have the 3D printed replacement panel. So the first step, let's start with the green lights. So if you look at it with the square piece right here, facing the bottom, we're gonna take the two LEDs that are connected to the blue wire. These are green LEDs. And we're just gonna pop them through the other side. And then take two of these clip lights and they should Go all the way in nice and securely. Then you're gonna have to um, finesse it through the hole in the panel. Next, take the yellow wires with the LEDs and that will go into the next one. Then the red ones. And last, you're gonna take the one that has one yellow and one blue wire. So the blue wire is the green one, and that will go on the inside part here. And then the yellow. Okay, and when you're finished, it should look like this. And next, you're gonna take this double-ended three wire connectors um, this is an extension cable for the LED ring in the cyclotron cake. You're going to want to take the side that looks like a uh, part of a castle. And on this part here, this is where the end filter is. We're going to run the cable through here, just on top, before we place it, before we close everything. Take a piece of tape and just hold it there for now. What happens is when, once this goes back on top, it fades through this gap. And turning our attention back to the cyclotron panel, we can go ahead and reattach the toggle switches. Again, be careful with the wires at the back here. They are very delicate. Do a quick test to make sure that they go up and down. Take the cover and we're gonna put the panel back in. Then we're gonna reattach it with the other piece.
and reattach it to the pack. Also, when you're placing the lid back on, make sure that the LED ring extension cable fits through that little notch on the end filter. It's gonna be a little tricky. You're gonna line it up as you're placing it down. Like that. Make sure that the hose wires are still on top of it and not underneath. Same with our auxiliary cable, make sure it's all the way and secure it. Okay, as you can see, um, the cables running up on the lawn, the left side is getting pretty tight. So we're gonna run the rest of these cables through the inside here. So let's start with the three pin one for the LED ring extension. So we'll cut through here and cut through there. And it's gonna be hard to show you here now that there's so many wires, but on the diagram here, I'll show you, there's a three pin red connector right down here. That's where this goes. Next, let's reconnect the blue one. I'm gonna run it along the same path. Okay, so for the four panel LED uh, connectors, I should have mentioned this earlier, it would be easier if you uh, kind of tape these up so that later on it's a lot easier to organize because it's gonna be a mess of wires. So I did my best to uh, separate these. And now, as you can see, my board's a mess. It's gonna be hard to show you. So I'm gonna take another board here and show you. So here are the four connectors for the cyclotron uh, inner panel. That's where you take the four pin double red connector and that goes there. Next, take the four pin yellow one. Make sure it has two yellow wires and that goes into the yellow housing. And then for the green one is the two blue ones. We didn't have any green wires from our supplier, so we have to use blue. And that goes in there. And then for the black one, that is the one that has one yellow L yellow wire and one blue wire. That is for the one single L yellow LED and single green LED. And that goes in there. Okay, once those are all connected, double check your connections again, triple check them. I do believe some of these LEDs are on different resistors. I don't remember which one, so you do not want to cross those up. So you want to make sure you get it correct. Now we can flip this over. You can put the board back on to hold the speaker down, or I'm just going to put my hand on it, hold the speaker down there. I'm going to go ahead and plug in the cake. Then turn on the battery and test it out. Nice. So just double check, make sure all the LEDs are working. Make sure the LED ring is set to this, the proper number of LEDs. I had mine accidentally set to 20, but it should be 35. So if you see the ring skipping for a reason, you got the wrong number. Okay, now that we've tested everything we possibly could and it's all working properly. We're gonna to have to do some cable management here. You're gonna to wanna to either use some masking tape, some zip ties, or some twist ties. Up to you, whichever methods you wanna use. And you wanna make sure these are nice and organized and not sticking out. So here's some tips. This part here needs to be flush. I know some of the cables are quite thick. So for that one, you're probably gonna to wanna to put a piece of masking tape over. But first, yeah, also if you can, try to keep that to the side as much as possible. This is a very important step. You want these cables to be tight against this wall and taped down. Reason being, when we put the motherboard back on, this each cell battery tray fits right about here. And there is some space here for wires but we just want to make sure it's tight against it as far as possible so it doesn't bump into this. So when I try to put it back on, these wires were a little too thick. So I'm just gonna route some of these behind the speaker instead. So the best fit for the motherboard is to have um, maybe a maximum of four wires going along the inner panel here 
and have it taped to the wall as flat as possible. And here as well, if you can flatten these walls, sorry, flatten these wires as much as possible, that would make it, give it a lot more room. And, and another tip, but not required, it is highly recommended to just saw this thing off. Um, we're, we don't use it anymore. And it's just taking up all this unnecessary space that we could be using for something else. For example, um, if you want to install a smoke kit, that's a great place where to, to put the smoke kit. If you want to put a 6,000 milliamp talent cell battery instead of the 3,000 milliamp battery without taking out the casing, it would fit perfectly right here. So I plan to use a Redmond aluminum motherboard, so that would be perfect for this. But if you're not, I do suggest cutting this out when you get a chance to. Next up, let's just keep zip tying everything. Okay, that looks good. You just want to double check, make sure everything's nice and flat, no wires are sticking up, because you want you don't want to um, impede the motherboard when you put it back on, so make sure everything's nice and flat. And we're just going to go ahead and place the motherboard back on. Here's a tip, line this up first with that hole, and then line up this with this hole, and this one here with this one, like that. If you purchase the kit with all the other add-ons, you can go ahead and leave everything open right now and jump straight to those other install videos. Otherwise, if you're done here, go ahead and close everything up. Thank you again for watching. Um, it's been a pleasure and I hope that you really enjoyed this kit. Um, so from on behalf of me, Michael and Dustin, I just want to say thank you. God bless and see you next time.